Okay, so today we are going to do a Rescue by Echo and the Bunnymen. Um, so yeah, it's been a while since I've done an Echo and the Bunnymen uh, reaction, and uh, apparently Rescue is one of their best works, so I thought why not uh, do this one to get back into them. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited to get back into the band because I enjoy their sound. But anyway, let's get into this. Hopefully uh, my glasses don't fog up too much because it's, you know, hot. But anyway, let's get going and uh, talk after. Rescue by Echo and the Bunnymen. Um, 
I have to say, off the top, this song, uh, I mean, off the start, I guess I have to say, with the ending, um, I really liked how, I guess just throughout the whole song, each uh, member was very prominent uh, in their role. Uh, like I said there, I loved the bass, uh, just a deep bass line. I mean, uh, I, really, I just really enjoyed that, uh, Les Pattinson on the bass. And then, uh, obviously, Ian's uh, vocals. And since it's been a minute since I've listened to the band, uh, I just forgot how much grit he has in his vocals. And uh, I guess you could say it's like a very kind of masculine sound. I guess you could say, you know, he sounds very manly. <laughs> uh, I just like his voice a lot. Uh, it's just, I don't know, it's kind of, it's got that kind of a raspiness, I guess you could say. Uh, just a deep voice to him. Uh, and then, of course, on lead guitar, I would say he started the song off uh, was Will Sargent. And... Uh, just like that opening, and then the drums came in with uh, Pete DeFreitas. I want to say that's how you say his last name. Uh, but yeah, he came in uh, with heavy drumming, I thought. It was just like, uh, I think I even said, like, damn, like, that was, <laughs> I wasn't expecting. I don't know, it, he just came in, and then uh, the song got going. And, uh, I mean, <laughs> the lyricism here, I have to say, I really liked uh, the lyrics here, you know. Uh, it was a great song, uh, you know, by the music, but the lyrics as well uh, really made it top-notch. And uh, there isn't much about the song uh, that I could find, you know, that people are saying what it's about and everything. Uh, but there is a song meanings page, and uh, somebody was talking about, you know, uh, how this could be about uh, Ian's, I guess, drug use and uh, substance abuse, whatever. And uh, but then somebody also replied, and this is like, uh, this is from like eight years ago, but I was just reading it, and uh, it said like, you know, that's he was basically an addict and stuff. Uh, but it said that uh, somebody replied and said he was only like 20 when he wrote this and that like he was still kind of just starting out on his kind of drug and alcohol, I guess, uh, addiction. So, yeah, I guess, you know, even still, though, uh, I guess he might have had kind of a premonition. This is just me thinking, I guess, uh, premonition of like, uh, or might not, it might not even be about drugs at all. I don't know. But just with the song title being Rescue. I mean, uh, it just, there, it's almost like he is asking, I guess, you know, something like it kind of honestly gave me, um, Joy Division and not, I guess with the lyrics and with the music, uh, and I guess this is from 1980 and I mean, Joy Division was, uh, I think, uh, Ian Curtis was dead by the time this came out. But anyway, uh, there was, I guess also with just the bass, how much I liked, uh, Les on the bass just kind of reminded me of Peter Hook, uh, and how much I love him on the bass in, uh, Joy Division. But anyway, um... Yeah, just lyrically, it was almost like, you know, how Ian Curtis asked a lot for help, I guess you could see through his songs, it was like, you know, people kind of say, uh, you know, it's like, it was like a suicide note, uh, with lyrics in, in his songs were, uh, but anyway, here, thankfully, uh, Ian McCullough is alive and everything, and, uh, yeah, but I can get it, the, the same kind of a feel there, you know, just... How the song starts off with, how, if I, uh, why can't I talk? If I said I'd lost my way, would you sympathize? Could you sympathize? So off the bat, he's just saying, if I said I lost my way, you know, I, I'm not saying I have, but uh, if I did, uh, would you sympathize with me? Uh, and then he says, you know, I'm jumbled up. Maybe I'm losing my touch. Uh, and then he said, but you know, I didn't have it anyway. And uh, I, I really like that line. Uh, honestly, since I listened to so much, uh, you know, Morrissey and stuff, that kind of reminds me of like a Morrissey lyric and stuff. Uh, but anyway, um, kind of a maybe tongue in cheek, but also kind of a kind of sad kind of realization. Um, you know, and then he goes on, things are wrong, things are going wrong. So this, you know, the whole song is just saying like, you know, uh, you know, things aren't the best right now. Uh, you know, would you come to my rescue? Um, and then it goes on. I like it when he said, can you tell that in a song? Like, it's almost like he's breaking the fourth wall, if you could say that, uh, here. Uh, you know, just saying, like, can you tell in a song that, like, I'm, you know, that, like, things are going wrong? Am I getting this across to you that everything is not okay for me right now? Uh, that's what I'm getting from, the, from that part. Uh, and then he goes on, I don't know what I want anymore. And it was like, I mean, I feel like a lot of us don't. Uh, especially after what happened here, uh, I guess that's what's still happening with the pandemic and everything. Um, you know, you start rethinking all of your life's choices and stuff, and you're like, what the heck do I want anyway? Uh, and then I like what he says, you know, first I want a kiss, and then I want it all. It's just like, you know, it starts with a kiss. Uh, what was, wasn't that a song? Uh, started with a kiss and ended up like this. Uh, I think it was a modern song or something, but anyway, um, <laughs> then it goes on again, you know, things are wrong, things are going wrong, can you tell that in a song, losing sense of the those harder things, and when he said that, I was just thinking, you know, just from that, you know, based on that line, uh, you know, when you're losing, you know, your sense of things, uh, you know, the harder things to do, I guess, in your life or whatever, whatever others might consider to be hard to do, even, I guess, for 
maybe even like Ian, uh, just thinking uh, from his point of view, maybe writing a song, uh, you know, doing vocals, whatever, playing guitar. Maybe it was becoming harder, even though he was only like 20 years old, whatever. Uh, but those, you know, harder things in life are becoming harder to do. He's like losing his sense of uh, that, you know, losing his sense of senses, I guess you could say. Uh, and then the whole, is this the blues I'm singing? Uh, I like that part a lot. And this, just how they, uh, they ended the song, like I said earlier, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, the backing vocals, you know, uh, singing Rescue. Uh, and then it goes on, you know, won't you come down to my, won't you come down to my. Uh, and I like how they don't finish uh, also when he says, uh, is this the I'm singing? He repeats that a couple times at the end, uh, which I thought was nice as well. Uh, just a great ending to a great song. Uh, and yeah, like I said, also I wanted to say as well, I have a lot to say. Uh, <laughs> around the two and a half minute mark when they kind of, uh, they were all going, uh, they had a really... I can't remember right now because, but I just remember the two and a half minute mark. Uh, they were all coming together and just like jamming out basically, which reminded me because I did see someone say uh, it kind of has a psychedelic feel, and that really did give me give me kind of a psychedelic feel. Uh, I don't know why, just maybe because it's uh, you know the Doors being my favorite band, um, being you know kind of a psychedelic band, uh, it gave me some uh, Doors kind of feels. I don't know why, but uh, once I saw somebody say that it's kind of a psychedelic kind of a song. I thought, well, I'm going to look out for that, and that's what I took away from uh, that part. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, he was only like 20 years old and he wrote this, so yeah, his drug problems and alcohol problems weren't, you know, at their peak yet as they were, you know, in the rest of the 80s, uh, but uh, there's a, a feel, I don't know, maybe you can say in the comments what you think this is about. I don't know, Ian might have said something himself, uh, but there's nothing about this on uh, Genius, uh, the Wikipedia page. Uh, doesn't say much about it either. It just talks about you know what this where the song charted and all that kind of a thing, and what people thought of it. But uh, it was a great sound, and uh, I have to say it really kind of uh, you know started off you know what Echo and the Bunnymen would do. It kind of what's the word I'm looking for? Like cemented them as like a great uh, band you know to come uh, into the '80s and stuff. And uh, just I mean their look as well. I was just looking at uh, you know the picture of uh, the band uh, from the 80s here uh, that had to do with the song or whatever. But uh, they just had that distinctive look as well. I mean, I just love uh, the hairstyles. And uh, anyway, I, I just really enjoyed the song. And, uh, and, you know, it's really relatable. I mean, the whole, would you come down to my rescue? And it just like, sounds like he's, you know, really kind of down on his luck. And uh, I just really enjoyed it. So anyway, I guess that's about it. Uh, this was a nice... Uh, return to Echo and the Bunnymen because uh, I really enjoy this band and it's been too long. So anyway, I guess that's it. Uh, thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting. Really appreciate all the support. And uh, yeah, I, I'll talk to you guys again uh, soon. <laughs>